Hello my friends! Welcome back! It is Wednesday once again here in my part of the world which is New Jersey in the United States. It is a very typical uh, north, northern New Jersey gray, dismal, um, just raw kind of a day. But I'm also beginning to notice that the days are getting longer. That the, um, the sun is not setting quite so early, although it's still setting by, you know, five o'clock. It's still pretty dark out there, but the days are obviously getting longer once again. And so time is marching on, and before we know it, we'll start seeing those uh, blooms of spring, uh, the, the warmer temperatures. Um, and honestly, it has not been a bad winter at all where I live, and I am exceedingly grateful for that. Um, while uh, my hand is still healing and I am unable to use a shovel and shovel snow, there are certain things I still can't do. Um, so I am just so grateful for, for God's provision on this Wednesday. And I know some of you are hoping for snow and just waiting for that day that it'll arrive. Um, and it has yet to show up here in my part of New Jersey. Um, and so you're craving that. I personally am extremely grateful that it has not yet come. Um, and, uh, you know, either way, uh, snowy days, rainy days, cloudy days or sunny days, we believe that all is given to us as a blessing from God and that all of it is part of God's provision in our lives. And so I am grateful for you, my friend, this day as you join me here on our Wednesday devotion. Um, let's take some time out and tune into our scripture. Uh, today we're going to be reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 1 through 5. So it's a short little uh, devotion this week. Let's see what it has to say. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a little child and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever welcomes a little child like this one in my name welcomes me. Well, my friends, um, I think we can all recognize that there are times when uh, we desire to be childlike, but I think it's also important to recognize that there are times when young children uh, may pretend to know things that they don't actually know. Um, childish ignorance and, and foolish pride of a child can blind the child from accepting the truth, but the truth is that childish ignorance and foolish pride are actually something we suffer from perhaps so much more as we become adults. Um, we become hardened to accepting the truth. We believe what we believe and we want to believe uh, what we have been told and not be challenged on that. Um, we will stick our heads in the proverbial sand in order not to have to change because change is certainly difficult. Uh, I can think of one, for instance, when I was a kid, um, I, my mother had told me that there was a state named Arkansas. And I had told her that, yes, there was a state named Arkansas, but that there was also a state named Arkansas, and I had seen it for myself, which truly I had. Uh, my mother tried to explain to me that no, it wasn't that way, that Arkansas is Arkansas, um, and it's just that's how it is pronounced. And I absolutely refused to believe my mother um, because my own foolish pride was hurt in admitting as a child that I was wrong. Um, and now, of course, my mother was right, um, and over time, uh, I matured, and I learned that truly uh, there was not two states. There was a single state named Arkansas, and Arkansas did not 
exist, but I still remember this circumstance this many, many years later um, because in time I can recognize that through maturity I was able to understand that I was wrong and that my mother was indeed right. And here in today's scripture passages, uh, however, we are told by Jesus himself that as adults, as disciples, as disciples who go to Jesus wanting to know who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven, Jesus tells us that we have to change. That unless we change and become like little children, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's a strange thing to say if we recognize that children are immature and filled with stubborn pride. But it makes all the sense in the world if we recognize that as adults, we have a tendency to be immature in terms of our faith and still filled with stubborn pride, insisting that the way we believe and what we believe and what we want and what we want Christ to do for us um, what we want this Christian faith to be like can often resemble the immaturity and stubborn pride of young children. What does that look like then for us if we are to change as uh, disciples of Christ and become like a child? Then surely what it becomes is it's, it's all about uh, shifting our preconceived ideas about a few things. First of all, and most specifically here in our scriptures today, it means shifting what it looks like to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's shifting even our very notion of what greatness is. And it is shifting our notion of how we become truly great. And so in this world, we live in a very competitive and often immature um, adult um, reality, particularly so perhaps here in America. Um, we have a tendency to be very self-centered. We want what we want when we want it, and we even feel that way about God. Um, and... Uh, we treat one another in a very competitive manner, even in our Christianity. And so Christ is telling us here to be very careful about being those who believe that we are the righteous and others are not, or believing that we have uh, come to an understanding of the faith that need not grow because our understanding is the right understanding, the only understanding, the understanding that then divides us from our other brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, humility is what Christ tells us it takes to be truly great. Whoever humbles himself like this child, and keep in mind that in um, Jesus' day and time, in Jesus' world, Children were truly humble. They had no rights whatsoever. Uh, there was no guarantee even that a, a child would grow up to become an adult. Um, and so uh, children worked hard alongside adults. They grew up very fast. Um, and they, until they became adults, really had no rights whatsoever. And so they were truly some of the most meek, humble, and... Um, uh, Meek and, meek and humble and powerless uh, part of society was the child. And Jesus tells us that whoever humbles himself like that child in Jesus' day with no rights, no personal autonomy, um, will be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So being great in the eyes of God is accepting that we don't know it all, accepting that we are often immature and self-centered, that our ideas about greatness are so far off base from what it is that God considers great. And uh, that greatness is found in finding true humility um, and to become childlike and let go of our stubborn pride, to recognize also that we still have maturing that needs to be done, 
uh, we still have learning that we need to do and entering into those processes of trying to become mature and educated in the scriptures and growing always in our faith by becoming utterly humble and um, assuming the position of the powerless child rather than the self-centered um, child who insists that they alone are, are right. So that is all for you this week. Um, I pray that this gives you some things to chew on for yourself. Uh, perhaps it expands your understanding of how to think about Christianity in the world. Um, and I hope it challenges you to accept that humility and to embrace that humility because when uh, we Christians in this world do so, then we are truly portraying the kind of Christians that Christ calls us to be, desires us to be, and, um, and that we are, are charged in being. So have a wonderful week, my friends. I will see you again on Sunday when we worship, as always, and I pray you have a blessed rest of your week. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.